Okay. So I think we are live. Hopefully it's working for everybody. Just going to make sure that it is. I don't know. Let me know in chat if it seems to be working. Yep. Are we good? Yep. Are we good? Good evening, everybody. It is Saturday, the 22nd of February. Hopefully you're all having a good time uh, and had a good week. We have some news to talk about, some fun things. Uh, probably be a shorter stream, maybe like an hour or so. Um, that's going to be kind of the goal. Probably not going to be like two hours like last week and the week before. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's It's been long on some weeks. Uh, let me turn that down. Sorry. Okay. So anyway, good morning, Michael in Taiwan. Super early for you, but thank you for joining. Um, okay. So... Um, Let's get some news. First and foremost, oh, we had a huge thing pop up, and that was the Cybertruck Hot Wheels. Yes, it is officially happening. Yeah, and basically there's two different versions of them. One is going to be a one-tenth scale Hot Wheels remote control Cybertruck, limited edition. That's like $400. I think it's, yeah, it's already sold out. Yeah, it's already sold out. And then they have a little tiny remote control one, which is like regular Hot Wheels car size, which is like 164th scale, which is only 20 bucks and much more affordable. Uh, it doesn't have as many features as a limited edition one, but it, it's still a cool little Cybertruck. Yeah, definitely cool. Um, fun fact, we did buy some, of course, and as soon as we get them, we'll be doing a giveaway. Um, especially with these 164th scale, because that's a little bit more realistic. Uh, as fun as these 110th scales will be, I guess we'll just have to find out. Yeah, but if you didn't get on the pre-order, you can actually enter in your email address right here and get notified. So definitely do that if you didn't get in a pre-order. Yeah. The only thing is, is it does look like they're not going to be out until like December 15th. So we're going to be waiting a while. Yeah, on the small one says December 15th. This big one says December. Um, so, I mean, we're looking at like eight months probably. Uh, but there's some cool things in here uh, that a lot of people didn't realize. So it does say kick it into sport mode for up to 250 miles per hour scale speed. <laughs> so this is a one tenth yeah. scale. So it should be able to easily do 25 miles an hour. And you bet we're going to go ahead and test that out. Um, there's some cool stuff with this, like the Tanu vault cover. Tanu. Um, that'll be really cool. So a lot of really cool stuff with this. I'm really excited for yeah. it. And the best thing, the reusable cracked screen. <laughs> the windshield? The, the window. Oh, so wow. that'll be kind of fun just oh. to kind of play around with. But um, here's like the actual like video video. Hopefully the volume's not too loud. We'll turn it down a little bit. But um, it looks, it looks pretty awesome. Uh, and I'm not sad that Tesla actually went with Mattel on this one and Hot Wheels to do this. So, I mean, it looks really cool. I'm it's super almost, excited. It's almost like the unveiling that we went to. It's, it's yeah, it's pretty cool. Video. Yeah, the video, the video is really epic. So. They just need the flames shooting up and that would have been. Oh yeah, we need flames. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So yeah, it has front, Headlights, taillights, the cover, the uh, ramp, telescoping ramp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tailgate. Uh, they should make actually a little like uh, ATV. ATV for this. I'm sure. Yeah. Insane towing capacity. That's pretty funny. Yeah. It's pretty good stuff. We can't wait. <laughs> um, a lot of cool stuff with that though. So um, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Four hundred dollars is a large ask though. Oh yeah, it, yeah. <clears throat> it's a very large ask, but if you actually like, there's some other videos and stuff you can check out, and they go into more detail about like how they're creating it, and they're actually gonna be doing like the internal seats and stuff like that. Oh wow! So it's it's not just gonna be like them taking like a little skeleton of the car and throwing it on. So they're they're doing a lot of work with it, which is pretty cool. Um, somebody said, what's the towing capacity? I don't know. They, they, I don't know. We're going to have to test that out, though. Yeah, we definitely will. <clears throat> so, yeah, I can't wait for that one. Um, firmware versions. Has there been anything new on that, David? Uh, nothing really new. I, I think most people are still on the 2020.4.1. We, 
We did see a few people start getting 2020.4.10, but there was really nothing new listed in the release notes. Some people did mention that if you go to the release notes, though, you can now see it shows the firmware version in there and which firmware vision those features were added. So we don't have that <coughs> yet, but we're waiting to see that. But it doesn't sound like it's a, a huge release, but hopefully it's something will be coming here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, it should be pretty cool once we get some more stuff. Hopefully we get some more FSD stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah. Um, and also, there is the uh, firmware notes. No, the, Change by revision. Yeah, that's so it'll basically show you uh, which revision you, uh, you know, what, what happened what on each revision. Yeah. yeah, should be really cool. Uh, we got a little bit of an update on Gigafactory Berlin, too. So they were actually halted from knocking down those trees, which, by the way, that's not like a natural forest. We should make sure everybody's aware of yeah, that. Yeah, those were trees. It was a single variety of, of like pine tree that was planted specifically for making cardboard. Exactly. So it, it was they were going to be cut down no matter what, one it, of these days. Exactly. So uh, there's been a lot of miscommunication about that. But anyway, they stopped them from knocking all that down because they're basically one day away from it. So there was like an injunction put on that or something like that. And um, uh, a couple days later in court, they were able to get the green light and move forward with that. So Berlin going right along. Yeah. And Tesla did say they will be replacing all those trees. They're going to be, I think, three times as many trees, and they're going to be multiple multiple species. So it will be a much better, uh, at, not at this location, but in other locations around Germany, they're going to be planting three times as many trees as what they cut down. Yeah. So also with the Gigafactory, they did mention they will, of course, be using solar uh, on the Gigafactory 4 there in Berlin. Yeah, which I believe they're planning on putting solar on all of Eventually, the yeah. Gigafactories. And they do have some at the Gigafactory 1 out there in Reno. We've seen it. But it's not a lot of solar compared to what they have for the roof space. It's only yeah. on, like, the north side, I believe. Uh, they still got a lot of room for a lot more solar. Yeah. So hopefully they uh, can add that up. That would be really yeah. Maybe they'll do solar roofs. Maybe that's what somebody was saying they might do in, in Berlin, but we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, solar panels, though, would be just fine, in it's, my opinion. It's, yeah, it's, you don't need, you know, on a commercial building, there's no need to have it look nice and pretty like that on the roof, so nobody's going to see it. So. Agreed. Um, next up, we have the stock price. So that, uh, we've kind of been talking about that recently. It's been really big in the news lately. And yeah, uh, closed at $900 on Friday. I think it was like nine hundred dollars and like eleven cents or something like yeah, that. Yeah, did jump up a little bit last week just because yeah. they t Tesla uh, issued that two billion in uh, new shares or whatever. Yeah, right. I think it ended up being like two point three billion in yeah. in total. But yeah. Um, yeah, pretty awesome stuff. And um, also in the stock price, I saw that Elon bought almost ten million dollars worth of stock. It was like a few cents or a few dollars shy of ten million, but yeah, you know, ten million dollars again. So he's definitely showing, you know, he still believes in the company and its performance. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see what else. So there's a big news article that we kind of want to cover too. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. It's about Tesla reading the speed limit signs and somebody putting tape on some of the speed limit signs, yeah. making it an 85 instead of a 35. But there's lots of holes in that story. Yeah. So first and foremost, it was an autopilot one car, which they haven't made in three, four years? Since like 2016. So the car was almost four, mm. maybe it could have been yeah. five or more years old. We, I don't know exactly when, but it was an older car with autopilot one. They haven't made that car since 2016 at least, or that kind of autopilot hardware. Yeah, and in addition to that, it's not even their hardware. It's Mobilize. Yep. And so, so there's a lot of holes in this article. So And so basically Mobilize, the hardware that was used for Autopilot 1, they have that technology. They have a patent on the, on the process of reading in speed limit signs, and that's why Autopilot 2, 2.5, and 3 don't do that. And so this test could only have been done with an old car with the old hardware because this won't happen on an Autopilot to or newer cars, so since October of 2016. And, yeah. and you know, people will say, okay, Tesla's speeds aren't always correct. That's, that's true because it's based upon GPS data and map data, but uh, it won't read, you know, newer cars won't read speed limit signs like that, and they, you wouldn't be able to fool them into jumping up to 85 like that. But to be honest, if somebody put electrical tape on the speed limit sign that would fool it a could driver fool a human driver yeah so it's just like you, yeah uh, yeah there's a lot that goes into it anyway i just wanted to kind of cover that give you our two cents on it because there's a lot that i saw 
kind of wrong with that. Yeah. And if you're going to do this, at least use a current model. Yeah, that's the reason they didn't is because you, it doesn't. You, you, <laughs> you can't yeah, exactly. do it that way. Yeah. Um, so another big thing is they added the ability and upgrade option for adding heated rear seats in SR and SR Plus Model 3s. And all you do is you do it through the app. 300 bucks uh, for that option. So... A lot of people wanted that. And now they have the option. It's nice. I've seen a lot of people are buying it up, especially in Canada and northern northern states. It's it's nice. Those people were able to save money getting their car a little bit cheaper. Exactly. And then they can add it later, you know, bit by bit, adding software. So it's cool that they do have or the software en enabled features. Maybe someone will gift that to them for Christmas. Mm, it's, 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 it's a possibility. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of cool stuff that they're able to add that after the fact software update because your car already has the hardware for it. Yep. Um, some people have talked, they're wondering if they might be having some other software updates. I know some people want to get like their fog lights upgraded or, or their, their other lights, you know, the ambient lighting. But Tesla started changing it so those fog lights aren't installed on all Model 3s anymore. So that's not going to be a software only update. But who knows, maybe they'll make it a, a, an update you can get they at totally the service could. center. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of cool things that Tesla can do with this. I think we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg here, though. Um, so that's kind of fun. Um, we have Model Y. This is the countdown. I, I, yeah. I really think we're going to start seeing them coming up in March. We've been hearing a lot of things that they're working on it, that it should be. So yeah, we, Q1, I, I'm... We're st still looking, hopefully, for March. We, we've heard some reports of some people, you know, we're definitely seeing a lot of cars lot. driving around with uh, manufacturer plates, especially yeah. in California, but they've been spotted all across the United States. But some people are starting to see cars without plates at all, so we're wondering if maybe they have started delivery of employee vehicles, a few of them at least. It wouldn't surprise me, because they kind of did that with Model 3. Yep. Um, they started with some employees, and I really think that they've really ramped up and they're really starting to kind of pump Y out from maybe stockpiling, maybe deliver them all at once. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Hopefully um, March. But we'll see. yeah, hopefully we can get ours in March. And, and, and again, they're going to start, fun. of course, with the performance models first, yep. the higher dollar ones. And yep. they're going to, you know, after they the demand for those slows down, they'll start releasing the, the you know, all wheel drive and then eventually get to maybe real real drive. Yeah. Um, next up. Um, there was a big news article about competitors talking about the FSD or Autopilot 3 computer saying that they can't touch that. They're like six years behind Tesla. Yeah, basically they <laughs> took apart, you know, Tesla looked at the full self-driving computer and it's like, wow, we, we don't have anything near this. And it's, it's going to take years for others to catch up. I think it was Honda and some others, but it's, it's just that's impressive that Tesla is that far ahead of the competition. It's extremely impressive, and it really goes to show you what they have done. And I really think another extremely impressive thing that Tesla's done that nobody else has is battery procurement. Yeah, definitely. With the Giga Everybody else is having issues. Yeah. And Tesla saw the need for the Gigafactory, and they built their own Gigafactory yep. so that it could produce, you know, I mean, 35 gigawatts or however, gigawatt hours, whatever, of, of batteries. They saw the need for that years ago, and they invested billions in, in making their own manufacturing facilities. And unfortunately, yeah. these other manufacturers aren't doing it. And we've seen what we saw an announcement yesterday that all these other different car companies are having to shut down on their production because they don't have any batteries. Yeah, a delaying production, everything. It's Batteries are a big thing, and Tesla really did it right. So props to them. Good on them. And then, uh, I guess last news, and then we'll start kind of taking some questions. I see a lot in chat, so we'll get to those in just a few minutes. Uh, Elon actually talked about Cybertruck a little bit via Twitter and clarified that there have been some back and forth on basically the width of the Cybertruck. And originally, it was 84 inches at unveiling. Yep. And then they came out afterwards and said they think they can do it at 80 inches. But he just took to Twitter, what was it, yesterday, right? Uh, like, yes, yesterday, yesterday he said that it's going to be... 82. Yeah. So 82 inches wide is, is pretty pretty big. Pretty big. Um, Model 3 for funsies. Let's see what that is here. Um, we're just on Tesla's website looking it up. They should have the specs here. Expand the list. Do they have the width actually online for this one? Ooh, I don't know if they do. Well, that's a bummer. Anyway, it's going to be a lot bigger than Model 3. We know that. I think it's going to be closer to, like, Model X. 
So, um, yeah, kind of fun stuff there. Uh, as far as that, that's kind of like the big news for the week. It was a pretty down week. Not a lot. Not a lot of news. I definitely think this Hot Wheels thing was <laughs> the biggest. Nice little surprise there. Yeah. yeah. And so I see some people in chat asking how to buy one, etc. So if you go to Hot Wheels Collectors .com, um, I can probably just post that in chat real quick. Oh no, chat's in the other window. Sorry, I cannot post that in chat. Anyway, if you just go to that website, you can actually find them. The four hundred dollar one tenth model though is sold out. However, the one sixty fourth RC Cybertruck for only twenty dollars is not sold out yet. And twenty dollars is is not bad. And it's very small though, so it actually fits in their little track. So yeah, there's the one tenth versus the one sixty fourth. Quite the size difference. Um, but yeah, you can check that out uh, and put your email address in for these if they open back up. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and work through some chat messages here. So if you see any, David, feel free to <laughs> shout them out. Um, somebody asked, how many Ys have we ordered? Just one. Only one. Um, and I saw somebody else was asking which Tesla we are going to sell when we take ownership of the Y. It's going to be my all-wheel drive Model 3. So, yeah. Yeah, the current, our current daily driver, we, you know, we have room in the garage. We could keep it, but we're going to go ahead. Since the other Model 3, the performance one, will be coming back eventually, uh, we're just going to trade that one in probably most likely with tesla yeah oh someone actually just looked it up for us so thank you rye the model three is 72.8 inches oh, wide it's about 10 inches so about 10 inches yeah. wider 10 inches is a lot when you're thinking about putting it in a garage so 25 centimeters there you go <laughs> um so yeah let's see what else do we got here jim said autopilot 3 is 20 times as fast as nvidia's self-driving chip yeah I can believe it. I think that's why everybody's so far behind is they're relying on other companies to develop it for them instead of doing it in-house. Yeah. Somebody later on, uh, we can you can go to the other question, but somebody later on asked if any of our cars have been upgraded yet. But basically that all-wheel drive Model 3 that we have already came with the Autopilot 3 hardware. Uh, our two Model S's and the other Model 3, the Performance 3, don't have it yet. Uh, Suppose once the one gets back from Japan, we can get the Performance 3 upgraded. Probably not going to get the uh, red 75D upgraded because we did not purchase full self-driving on that one. But the, we did purchase full self-driving on the S100D, but they have not started doing any hardware 3 upgrades on AP2 cars yet. So still waiting on that. We're going to put in a request again. We hear some people are tw tweeting Elon, and he's saying that it is possible, and we've heard some other people saying that they're working on a way to upgrade Autopilot and perhaps the MCU, but we haven't seen anything definite yet. Yeah, so still kind of ongoing on that one. Um, let's see here. Jim said he just looked up the 2020 F-150, and that is at 80 inches. So slightly narrow. So slightly narrow. The, the Cybertruck, oh, it's, it's a big. It's, it's big. It's big. I think we can all agree on that. Um, somebody was asking about my Model Y. So I actually, uh, they asked what spec it is. I have, I, I mean, I can show you what I have without showing you what I have because my reservation number's on there and everything. But this is basically, uh, I'm doing a white exterior and then we have the performance and the performance upgrade, which does give me these larger rims, which, if you look, does actually hurt the range yeah. by a significant amount, 35 miles. Uh, but the good news is I actually have these Geminis from when I went to China and bought them off somebody. They're currently on the Model 3, but when I traded it, I'm going to throw the 18-inch arrows back on it yep. um, or sell it. And then I'll have both sets, basically, so we can play around with that. I'm going to do white exterior. You only have the one option for the rims with the oh. performance upgrade. Oh. We are doing the white interior though. I really missed having that white interior on the Model 3 all-wheel drive because I went with the black because it was kind of all they had at the moment. Yeah, and I needed a car yeah. kind of quick. So I am going to get that again. So that makes me really happy. And 
definitely just doing the five seater. The seven C option just isn't isn't for me. And last but certainly not least, probably the most important thing, I'm definitely getting FSD. Um, so the nice thing though is when I ordered it, the price was sixty eight thousand. So I'll actually have that price locked in. So that is the price I will pay. So yeah. I saw David was asking here about the CCs that Elon did mention, you know, the S and X are going to get increased ranges. Like the S will yeah. be up to like 390 and the X will be like 351 or somewhere around there. Um, Elon did say that cars recently made will be getting this. So part of it's going to be a software update, but there's probably some hardware that has been upgraded. And he did say something like potential. not everybody gets the full 390, but depending on what hardware you have, you might get 370, 380, 390. Yeah. And, and he's asking, will the 3 and Y get these upgrades? It's it's possible. I uh, It really depends what they did for SNX. Yeah. Um, if the SNX, because... Recently, last year, the SNX got the more efficient motor from Model 3 for their front motor. Yeah. So it could be they've been fine-tuning that f to work for SNX better. Uh, it could be potentially a bigger battery. No one's taking yeah, delivery we, of a Long Range Plus to yeah. confirm that. Waiting to see that. We have seen some different battery stickers for cars built since about December of 2019. But nothing's That, that are Long Range. It's basically still a 400 uh, volt battery. And the same seri or same model number, but they've changed the labeling somewhat, so it no longer says 100 kilowatt hours on the battery. So something's changing there. Like, yeah, um, uh, my guess would be there might be an extra module in that battery pack. We just no one said anything. No one. I think there's a label on there too. It mentions too about the recycling or capability or you know what you can do for recycling of it. There's some ah. like code for that but other than that it's probably still about the same battery but yeah. um as for the model 3 it's possible they could increase the range but i think they're still going to try to keep the s with the top range overall so that you know, definitely that will have an advantage over the three but we just heard today was it consumer reports or some other consumer reports thing, yeah they, they were saying that they were able to get 350 miles of range which is way above what tesla even quoted for the the estimated range on the model 3 um even elon tweeted it out and actually, we responded to Elon and said, only 350 miles, psh, we got 600. Yeah, I don't so, know if you guys remember that. So it was a couple of years ago. What, back in 2018, I think, the summer? Yeah. And we basically did a, a hypermiling uh, test on the Model, Model 3, and we were able to get over 606 miles. Yeah, so here you can see Elon tweeted this out earlier. Model 3 achieves 350-mile actual range versus 310 EPA. Um so, I mean, 350 is not unheard of. It really depends on your environment, your driving style, etc. cetera. Um, there's some really funny replies. So maybe check those out. It's a pretty interesting, it's a pretty interesting thread. I'm not going to lie. I had a blast reading some of those. So, I don't know. Check that out. But, yeah, you can easily get it. We've seen it time and time again. We've had this discussion last week, actually, with some people. And they were saying they couldn't get it, but it really depends on your driving style. Yeah. Kind of what it boils down to. Uh, Mr. L says, will there be a small accurate scale model of the Cybertruck? I would expect Tesla to release one kind of like they have. Uh, actually, if you look at David's cam, oh, yes. there's the Roadster, the 3, <laughs> the S, the X, and the Cybertruck up top there. That Cybertruck is actually a, <laughs> the Lego Cybertruck. But um, I would expect them to release something like that for the Cybertruck. Definitely. I'm sure it'll, be out, it'll probably be about $250, but I'm sure they'll have it eventually. But 250 is cheaper than 400 Oh, definitely. It just yeah. won't be remote controlled. Yeah. So I, I would expect something like that. Yeah. So I see Got Grapes got a question. He says it uses about 40 kilowatt hours a day. What would be a good size system for solar? Well, that kind of depends on where you live, because if you True. live up in Maine, you're not going to get as much sun as if you live in like Arizona. But just um, giving you an idea of our system, we have to, like over 20 kilowatts and we have like 63 panels. And on a good day, we don't know yet how much we can get in the summer because we just got the, the additional uh, four kilowatts added. But on a good day in the summer last year, we were getting close to 130 kilowatt hours production. And then on a bad day uh, in the winter when we still had sun, but no clouds or no snow, we could get about 40 kilowatt hours 
with our system, even in the in the dead of winter on the shortest day of the year. So uh, yeah, you could you know you're probably not going to want a huge as big of a system as ours just because we use so much more power than that. We probably use two to two and a half times more power than you. Yeah. So I would say a good size system for you might be like the the ten kilo. Well, they don't have ten. They they go now four. 8 and 12. So maybe a 12 uh, or an 8 kilowatt system is probably going to be a good one for you to, to look at. And they will figure all that out for you if you contact yeah. them. They're going to ask you for copies of all your uh, electric bills for the past year and they'll calculate it out. But just a, based on your 40 kilowatt hours, I would guess probably a medium sized system, which would be uh, probably about 24 panels. Yep. Um, Joe's asking, will the Y get solar roof? I don't believe so. I, it, I don't know. I don't personally think solar roof options for cars are the point where they make yeah, sense. It doesn't add that much because even if you no. sat out in the sun all day long, you might be able to add a couple of miles. And just for the cost, it's going to cost hundreds of dollars. That, that Those couple of miles a day probably never going to pay for itself. So it's probably not going to happen. Now, if they Agreed. did add, it may be, you know, maybe someday they'll have some new technology that lets them, I've, I was reading years ago about some other company was trying to research, you know, collecting solar just from any body panel. So it didn't look like a solar panel, Yeah. but that's, we haven't heard anything about that since then, but maybe eventually we'll have some, some, some sort of solar power in the cars. But right now I doubt the, the Y is not going to have anything. No, I don't see the Y having it, which I mean, it would be nice. It's just not to where it would add a big enough benefit. I don't think, um, Ozzy to you said the performance upgrade checkbox is now a no cost option. Correct. So I believe it's the same way for model three too, that the um, performance upgrade is now no cost. I'm actually trying to look real quick. We can turn it over to this. So if you do a performance here, add the performance upgrade, it doesn't actually change the cost at all anymore. And Originally, when I ordered mine, I think it was like, it was a couple thousand dollars, I think. Yeah, and originally, too, on the Model 3, it was like a $5,000 option. Oh, yeah. Maybe or, that's what or I paid. Or more, uh, originally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Veronica says, why? I see what you did there. Do you uh -huh. not get it in blue? Um, I don't know. The Tesla blue just isn't for me. It's okay, but also... It's I had, nice. I had a blue car before, so I'm kind of over it because I had a, a blue car for like 20 years, so... Yeah. Uh, we like white. Plus, when we put our wraps on them or put symbols on, you know, we the, it definitely stands out against the white. Yeah. We're, we're planning on wrapping and doing some fun stuff with the Y. We just... I mean, to be honest, I would share it with you, but we don't know. Yeah. Still deciding. So. <laughs> we don't know yet. Yeah. So I see Shabzilla is asking if we think that they're going to discontinue the S and X in the next five to 10 years and focus on the three and Y. I don't think so. I mean, I could maybe see them getting rid of the X or, or yeah. changing it just so it doesn't have the, maybe the Falcon wing doors because those are pretty complex. As we see with the Y, they went with regular doors. And, uh, but if the, if the X was the same as the Y, then they wouldn't really need a whole separate model. So I don't know. But I think they're still going to always have a, a, a a sedan like the X or like the S, I'm sorry. That's they got to have something that's a little bit above the three, a little more special, but still way less than the price of the Roadster. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I don't know. Elon said they're only going to be like five percent of the market in the future, so I guess we'll find out. Right um, now, the way the way that they're pricing them, though, they're they are about the same. They're just above the highest price Model Y. So, yeah. so they're not that much more expensive anymore. They used to cost, you know, a lot. 160,000, 165,000 for a fully loaded yeah. performance and, X. And now you can get a, not a performance, but you can get like a, a fully loaded uh, long range plus Model S for like 90,000 or less, I think. Yeah. So. Um, Crazinator says, has there been, or have there been any rumors from the next update might be coming out? Seems like Hardware 3 retrofits are streamlining now. So when... So we could be getting close for me, or close for one. Um, I don't know. We haven't seen any of these Long Range Plus S and Xs delivered yet. There could be something. Yeah. I guess we don't know yet. Yeah. So Michael's asking about the Unplugged Performance 3 coming back from Japan. Do you have any updates for that? Speechless. Oh. Yeah. Um, nothing right now. He's, he says it would be cool to have it track the Nürburgring. <laughs> there's a that lot. Would be cool. <laughs> there's so many fun things that we could do with that car. There's a lot of fun stuff potentially being planned. 
there, and and we'll have definitely have videos on that. In we'll the have videos coming, soon. and we'll let you know more what's happening. But right now, it is still in Japan. At the what's the where, is it still available for people to see in Japan? Uh, I believe it is still at Autobox. Auto correct. Box, yeah. Um, Robert M says, "Were you successful in swapping the black interior to white in your diecast model oh, three? Yeah. Let me look. I remember. I thought you did that. Plus, yeah. you did it in the little model three. Do you have those in yeah, here too? So here's this guy. Um, oh. When you buy the white model three. It actually has black interior, so I actually um, got like that a blue one or something, here. right? So I ended up painting the doors though, because swapping that, I was gonna break those pieces. Yeah. But the dashboard, the whole interior was swapped from the uh, blue model. So me. yeah, for those of you who don't know, the white one normally came with black interior, and I believe the blue one had the white interior, and so Eric bought the blue and swapped them and. Whatever happened to the blue Model Three? I don't remember. Did you? Um, did Chris get that? Or still in the garage? Still in the garage. Oh well. Okay. Don't talk. It's secret. <laughs> it's a secret. secret. Okay. It's a secret. Sorry, it's a secret. What's happening to that? Um, yeah. So, but yeah, swapped it. Looks great. Just don't swap the door panels. Just paint those because he'll break them. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, how's battery degradation in our cars? From Rich P Perry. Um, good was, question. Well, on okay, so we'll, we'll start. From I would the, start with the oldest. The oldest car that we have currently is the Model S 100D, which we took delivery of in March of 2017. So it's almost three years old. It just passed 41,000 miles. Yep. And when we do a hundred percent charge on that, it still shows 330 miles, which is, I think it was 335, and and sometimes it even shows 332, I believe. So it has yeah. almost zero degradation on that s 100 d Now we do have also an S75D which was delivered in December of 2017. It has gone through a lot more charges and it has 52,000 miles and it's lost, I, I think it's when fully charged it's maybe 235 but I think it was up about 250 when it was uh, brand new. Yeah. So those are the two oldest cars. For the Performance 3... Uh, I don't think we've lost I, and all. it's hard to say we haven't because we don't haven't seen that because it's been in Japan yeah. and traveling to Japan so we can't sure. give an answer on that one and the other three that we have currently uh, it's only got it's four thousand miles on it so it has new. no degradation it still charges up to like your what is it three fifteen or so, somewhere I don't know what you get but it's it's no degradation on the new Model Three yeah. Uh, Jim says, have you seen the chromatic wraps that looked in different colors depending on the angle? Some are pretty cool. Yep. So actually, fun fact, this was what the Model S used to look like. Yeah, the S100D. That's um, so it went from like a dark green to like a gold and everything. Absolutely loved it, but we uh, switched things up a little bit. Still looks great, but it was a fun wrap while we had it. Um, we're, we have a lot of things that could potentially be going on by... For the Y, actually. But we haven't settled yet. Um, Greg asked when we can expect to see live streams in 4K. Hopefully soon. Need to work on the internet. Because as it is now, I'm getting a bit rate lower than recommended value. But actually, this camera is a Sony mirrorless. This is actually a 4K webcam. Which, looking at it, because this is the first time we've ever used it, I'm not super happy with it. I don't like it. It looks blurry. So we'll probably switch it out to get the same camera that is here. And um, maybe I'll probably get better internet and then hopefully 4K. That's the goal, at least. Um, Veronica asks, in the future, are you getting a Cybertruck? Yes. So we currently have two pre-orders. Two pre-orders, but again, we're only planning on actually getting one of those. We originally ordered like a dual model because those were supposed to be coming out first. But then they said they were going to have the tri-motor one uh, come out. So we added a second order instead of canceling the first yeah. one. So we, we have an order for both. The original thing was if the dual motor comes out first, I'd buy that. And then as soon as tri-motor, I'd get that and swap it over. But hopefully tri-motor comes out first, and then I don't have to do that. Um, Vince says, any timeline on when X and S are getting a refresh? So there really hasn't been anything. I know... Or didn't they say hopefully plaid powertrain by the end of 2020? I believe it's coming out sometime this year and and right now we're seeing Elon's tweeting about the increased range and that's and we've also yeah. seen some rumors from uh, online some um, that there is perhaps a 110 or, or higher kilowatt hour battery pack coming so even more range with that but as Elon has tweeted about the plaid version that's supposed to be coming out later this year but yeah. and he 
they, we've seen two different prototypes. One had a vertical screen, one had a horizontal screen. But we're thinking that this, with this new uh, Plaid version, they might finally come out with the horizontal screen for the Model S and yeah. the X. I would hope so, because the horizontal screen makes it much better to watch Netflix, YouTube, the games, etc. And again, as, as I've mentioned in the past, I hope we still don't lose the the instrument cluster behind the steering wheel. I know it's just fine with the Model 3 to get along without that, but I love the customizability of the S and X where you can put all different, uh, you know, the energy or, or your tire pressure. You can have everything up there, your music, your navigation. Uh, I hope that we still have that capability in a new Model S or X. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Robert said there's a rumor, unsure if it's verified though, that a Model Y reservation holder on Reddit got the final cost document from Tesla and it was a few grand less than what he originally anticipated. I mean, I'm totally down to pay less. I don't think it's a bad price as is, but I haven't gotten my final cost documents yet. But if someone's getting those, that means they're basically ready to take delivery. So, I mean, we'll have to research that and see if we can find that. If you have the link, maybe throw it in chat. It might mark it as spam, but I, I'll approve it. Um, I see somebody's see. wondering if I should have my seatbelt on. I'll, I don't oh, think so it's, seatbelt. Yeah, I'm just jumping ahead. But, yes, these are fully functional seatbelts. And, uh, but, yeah. How funny would it be, though, if, like, you seatbelted yourself in and then it yeah. didn't unlock? Yeah, but we don't have, the like, the pretensioners or whatever, I don't think. So they're not going to lock me in, but... Uh, uh, I think those do have the pretensioners still. Oh, they Fun do? Fact. Okay, well... <laughs> so maybe we should be careful with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Jim's talking about the highest mileage Model X being sold by Test Loop with 401,000 miles, and it says range is 290 miles. I think that one had a new battery a couple hundred thousand miles ago. I can't quite remember, but impressive either way, for sure. Um, let's see here. Sorry, lots and lots of questions. And it just jumped ahead. Um, I don't know. Oh, yeah, there's a seatbelt comment. Yeah, everyone else agrees. The webcam looks blurry. So no, webcam's so out. Okay, back to Amazon it goes. Yep, that's going to go back, <laughs> and we're just going to get another mirrorless camera. Does this camera look okay? I mean, it looks okay on my computer, but I don't know. Let me know. Let's see here. Uh, someone asked if we're getting a Tesla Semi. So, no, probably not. I would love to, but yeah. it's a lot it, of money. It would for be that. neat, but also it's like... It's and a where daily, do we park it? Yeah, we don't I have a daily drive. drive it. We could park it in the driveway. There is room in the driveway, but I don't think we drive it a lot, and, and it would be hard driving that and parking at work, I think. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, work would be fun. Uh, Michael asks, what do you guys think we'll see first, the Cybertruck or the Roadster 2? Any mods planned for either of those two cars? Um, for the first part, I definitely think we're going to see Roadster first. I'm crossing our fingers, hoping we see the Roadster 2 sometime this year yeah. or early next year. Yeah, so I definitely think we're going to see Roadster 2 first. As far as mods, yes and yes. Yeah, but we are eagerly awaiting both of them. But yeah, yeah we can't wait for that. The Roadster is going to be amazing. I mean, I'm excited for the Cybertruck, but I'm more excited for the Roadster. Yeah. Don't tell Elon I said that, please. Yeah. And or yeah. Franz. We have we have room for it, but of course, you know, if we get the Roadster, we're going to have to make the room in the garage and get rid of one of the other cars. So, you know, we're going to be pulling straws. Try guessing, you know, which one of those other cars we're going to be getting rid of. <laughs> uh, Jim says, uh, "I bet we'll get a refresh." After battery and drivetrain investor day, uh, that'd be a guess. That's, yeah, it'd and be a natural time to talk about improvements for sure. And that's coming agree. up. What we don't know exactly yet. Maybe April or May. Uh, I think they were saying four twenty. And oh, okay. And Elon, I believe, said it's going to be at the Gigafactory two in uh, Buffalo. So we'll yeah. see, and, and we'll try to uh, get more information on that as as the date gets closer. But yeah, that'd be cool if they did announce that bigger battery then. Yeah. Um. Anders is asking, will all newer Teslas have CCS? Currently, none do in the U.S. for, like, U.S. Uh, spec. Unfortunately, still have in the U.S. I know, I know that, you know, uh, Tesla's network in the United States is is the largest by far of, of any uh, fast charging network. But it would be nice if they did have an adapter for CCS. I mean, Europe yeah. got it last year, so it's like all they need to do is put a little bit more hardware and computer, you know, into the... Uh, and the S and X, the, but the, the 3 already has it, and the Y will have it, I'm sure, when it's released in Europe. But it would be nice if they brought that to us. And we yeah. probably wouldn't use it a lot, but on road trips, it gives you It'd that extra option. option. Yeah. And we do have a video coming up, though, showing how the Tesla network is, t is still amazing for 
uh, for charging and these other C CCS networks, uh, th they'll work, yeah. but it's not going to be as uh, affordable as Tesla's. Yeah. Uh, Crazy Nader asks, what are your thoughts on long range batteries, especially for people that live in colder climates? Definitely. It, it is a concern. Um, so the more range you have, all the better. Yeah, so if, yeah, so there is you know some loss. It happens in ice cars, ice vehicles as well. But when you have that larger battery, uh, you just have that much more capacity to play with. So if you do have some really bad weather or some slushy roads and stuff, which help or they hurt your range, yeah. then the, the longer range you have on a battery, the, the better. David says, "Do you think three performance will get a performance upgrade when they come out with the Plaid?" I honestly. Don't think so. Yeah, I don't know how much more they can do because they have the performance and they've added. The, I mean, the they could add different motors potentially, like change it to okay, like, like motors. Wise, yeah. Um, but yeah. I honestly don't think so because they need. If they do that, they're basically putting the nail in the coffin for Model S. Yeah, because I saw when you were going through the website earlier, it looks like the Model Three now says 162 is the hop, top speed. Uh, the Y hasn't um, been upgraded yet. Model Three has been 162 for a while. Okay, but but the, what's the S and X? Because don't ask how I know that. Um, S and X, so we can pop over here, and so S, if you custom order one, so see, that's 155 for long but range But that's not plus. the performance, yeah, so 163, oh, so one mile so, per hour faster, so, yeah. so it's like, one mile, you know, so is, are they going to come out with a plaid three to add one mile more per hour? I don't, know. I don't think so. I don't, well, I'm not there. It's and the acceleration concerned too, with the top speed. That doesn't yeah. really mean much. You I can want never go that fast here anyways in the States. So Legally. Legally, yeah. Legally. Um, I'm more concerned with, I want that zero to 60. But that's where the Roadster is going to come in. I, I 2.3, like 2.4, whatever S is now is ridiculous. So I think. I think that's good. Um, Ozzy to you has a good question. Can you speculate on the impact of coronavirus on China Gigafactory and potential sales in the country um, with no signs of it letting up? So a lot of companies have actually already told investors that they expect Q1 to not be so pretty because of this. Uh, Apple is one of them. Uh, massive company that has said it's definitely impacting them. They have a lot of factories there, though. Um and when and when uh, you know Tesla did come out with an announcement a couple yeah. weeks ago saying that they will were shut down, it was going to affect their production and <clears throat> delivery schedules a little bit. Uh, their stock price did drop for a yeah. couple of days, but then the Chinese government gave Tesla that permission to go ahead and and start production and deliveries back up, and we, and they've been doing that for the last couple of weeks now. And, yeah, and their stock jumped back up. But and they, I think like the best thing for Tesla is the factory is just starting up. So it's, it wasn't like full-fledged already because that would have hurt them more so if it was already pumping out cars and was already up and running. Um, but yeah, I, I would expect it to affect pretty much any company that has a presence in China. Um, <laughs> Jim said seatbelts at home look funny. You're ready for any earthquake. Yeah. Luckily, we don't get those here. Not really, yeah. But, oh, somebody said the seats should be heated. Yeah. These ones are the ventilated ones over there, but we'd have to hook up something on those to get them working. Yeah, but that would be fun. Actually, though, they do have the heating elements still in there. They so do. If we, I never took those if out. If we power those up, we could probably do that. Yeah. We just need some controls, though. Yeah. <clears throat> that would be really fun. Um, so Gavin was asking, he said Elon mentioned a mini Tesla able to fit a person. But uh, I haven't heard about that, so I can't really make any comments. you know what he's... I don't remember that either. I mean, I know Tesla China has released some sketches of a potential China made China like specific Tesla. A little, a little tiny car that just yeah. really, uh, But I don't think it was one person. Yeah. Well, until then though, you if you could if you're small enough, you could use one of those Model S for kids, <laughs> but that's, that's not going to be street legal. So. Yeah, that would be fun though. Um the four hundred dollar remote control Cybertruck is one one hundredth the price of the base Cybertruck. Oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> but I think I'm not surprised it sold out so quickly. That's definitely gonna fun one to yeah. play with. Got grapes said start parking Teslas inside the living room. Yeah. Or we get a warehouse. <laughs> we need to do something. Um, Jim said the now you know guys are swapping the free roadster for a semi. Oh, I didn't know. I that don't that think. Was I think no, they're they, selling. They, we heard that they put in a reservation. Yeah, they put in the, a reservation for the semi, but they're probably selling one of their roadsters yeah. to buy the semi because 
I don't think Tesla would let you switch it like that. Yeah, so basically what they'll do, I, we're just assuming, but they would probably take delivery of the Roadster, sell it, or, you know, transfer the ownership, and then take those funds to then pay for the semi. I'll and send we, some text messages later and ask them. Yeah. Um, let's see. Someone is asking if someone were to buy a Cybertruck to replace a Model X for range reasons, sh should they keep the Model X even though it's out of warranty? I mean, if you don't need two cars, I would just trade in your X for the Cybertruck. And actually, that's what I know a lot of people that own Xs are going to do. So, it works out that way. Uh, Veronica says, how many Teslas do you have in life? Right now, we currently have four Teslas. Uh, over the past four years, we have purchased ten, but currently four of them. Two S's and two threes. And we, uh, a lot. So, so over the years, we've purchased five Model 3s, uh, four Model S's, and one Model X. Yep. Sorry, I was trying to do the math in my head. Um, we da, have da, to da, have da, a spreadsheet da. to keep track of all that stuff because you know, it just the lease keeps growing, and we're going to be getting that Model Y one of these days soon. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jonathan is wondering, because he's curious, what are our thoughts as to why Tesla's deciding to have Battery Day in Giga New York? Yeah, I was wondering about that, but I'm... They're going to show... They want to show that off. They yeah. haven't yet. Yeah, we haven't heard much about it. I mean, when they first purchased it from Solar City and they said, okay, we're going to start producing solar there, they also produced the superchargers there, the V3 yeah. supercharger shells and all that equipment. That, so we do know that they make more than just solar there. Mm -hmm. And so maybe, uh, who knows, maybe they're going to start doing some battery manufacturing there. Yeah. Or if not, maybe they're just also on the battery day going to be talking about solar because definitely solar is something that they're trying to really... Really ramp Solar's up. huge for them right now, and definitely with the solar roof, they're ramping that up. So I think they just want to kind of bring all that into light and show a lot of people what they're working on. Uh, Aiden's asking what we think of Rivian, the truck. It looks it looks nice. Yeah, there's a lot of things that I actually really really like about it. My biggest issue with not just Rivian, but it's any other EVs or EV startups is their charging network. Yeah, that's what Got Grapes pointed out as well, is none of the other competitors, yeah. Ford, Mercedes, they don't have a charging network. And while no. Electrify America is out there and it is expanding greatly, it's it's not integrated into the car's navigation and the charging you know, software. So you have to do all that planning yourself. So yeah. Tesla, it's nice that superchargers are there and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And they work. There, there's so many of them and they... You know, some of them have problems. We're going to admit they're not perfect. But I've heard so many horror stories about people trying to use an Electrify America or yeah. some other networks, and there's only a couple stalls there, and they don't work. And then what Or do do? they do work, and you have to pay $50, $60 amounts of money. to yeah. fill your battery. It's yeah. nuts. It costs more than a gas car at that rate. Paul saying, did you guys get in touch with the Pikes Peak driver looking for a Model 3? Um, I messaged him a long time ago and never heard anything back. He has my number, though. Oh, yeah. that's So, yeah, but... We, I think we met him. Didn't we meet him at... Uh, no. Okay. We were supposed to. A lot of things just didn't work out. Anyway, he has my number. They know how to contact me. But we do have but a, a Model to be honest, <laughs> I No. I'm going to drive it up Pikes Peak. Oh, okay. If, and if that car's going up Pikes Peak, it's me. Sorry, guys. But, yeah. I don't, I don't know I'd let somebody else drive that up Pikes Peak. I want to do it. <laughs> I'm going to be selfish for a few minutes. Let me have my time. Um, Vince is asking, does accelerating 0 to 60 hurt your battery every time uh, you give someone a test drive? Nope. Nope, not at all. The The big issues with batteries, you just don't want to let it sit at 100. And likewise, you don't want to let it sit at like 0 or very low. Yeah. Um, let's see... Um, yeah, so Rich is talking about the Brazil government talking with Tesla about building a gigafactory there. Yeah, um, last I heard, it was just uh, Brazil government offered to kind of let Tesla have some land and uh, help them out probably with like taxes and stuff like that. That's what a lot of places do. So it'd be interesting to know if they do that. But I think the big takeaway from this, though, is a lot of places are now going to Tesla saying, mm -hmm. we would like you here. They saw what happened in China and how yep. they were able to build up from scratch and, and start producing cars yeah. in less than a year. And now that's going to be able to supply the entire Asian market. Uh, and so all these, you know, South America's now, hey, we want to get in on that action because that's going to bring jobs and really help the economy. And, and it'll be great for Tesla too, but I don't know about autopilot. I, I don't know if some of our viewers yeah. there are in South America, but I have been there 
And some of the driving was crazy <clears> where <throat> it's like one lane wide and but two lanes of traffic and people just pulling over and honking all the time. And yeah. I would be... If they do start having Teslas in South America, I don't think they're going to turn on autopilot down there anytime soon. No. And not all countries are like that, right. definitely. But some are better than some others. Some of them are but, better than yeah. others, but it, yeah. 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 Uh, but it, it's quite the contrast to originally when Tesla was like trying to find a place and nobody wanted them. Yeah. Now it's total flip side. Everybody wants them and kind they're willing to give them good incentives kind of, to go there. Kind of the same with what you know Elon tweeted about Gigafactory in Texas. Where yeah. Tesla wasn't yep. even allowed to sell. You know, they're, they it's really difficult to sell the Tesla in Texas. But maybe if they're building a gigafactory there, maybe the laws can be changed. Um, yep. You know, when Tesla brings all those thousands of jobs, maybe okay. they'll make it a little easier to buy a Tesla in, in Texas. Yeah, uh, Jim brought up a good point too. If China demand goes down, they could always ship some cars all over Asia. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's kind of what we were kind of hoping for to begin with. Is they could ship them to Asia, Australia, uh, Australia New yeah. Zealand, all, all over. over. Yep. So, yeah, that'd be actually great for them. It's that much less on a boat, which is great. Yeah. and yeah. Um, So let's see. I guess a lot of people are pro getting a warehouse and calling it a museum. <laughs> yeah, and start offering tours. I don't, I'm a fan. We've had, you know, we've hosted at some Denver Tesla Club events here at our house. And uh, we've had uh, sometimes, you know, over 24 Teslas in our driveway and parked along our Not street. all ours. Not all ours, no. Yes. <laughs> but, but I think uh, we need to clarify that. Yeah, but we've, we've, we've had a few events open to, you know, the Tesla Motors, or Tesla Owners Club here. But, um, yeah. and we've had other events where Eric has helped install uh, for Abstract Ocean. You had your little rap day or rap yep. party. Yeah, we had some rap parties. Um, rap with a W. And we, I want to yeah. clarify that. I'm not a good yeah, singer. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but I mean, yeah, so we had, how many people? We had like... 10 plus Teslas uh, in the yeah. driveway lined Between up to get their center consoles cars wrapped. That Eric was wrapping. And, you know, some people yeah. uh, had to wait because he was doing them all himself. <laughs> but, you know, we've had it was a, good time, though. a Everyone lot was of hanging out. come by and, and we've helped them out with their cars. <laughs> yeah. We've even had some people come by multiple times uh, with yeah. multiple cars. Yeah. So, yeah. You yeah. know who it, you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, though. <laughs> yeah. We don't mind. Yeah, it's no, great we don't mind at all. Um, everything Tesla Pro says, do you think I'll make money on reselling my Cybertruck? I don't know. I mean, it, I don't know. Maybe if you could get in one of the very first ones, and if they are backlogged or if they haven't ramped up production, you might be able to at the beginning. People tried doing that with the Model 3, and some were able to kind of flip it at the beginning. But now that they've ramped up production, you can't. You Only can't like really... the first handful. I'm talking yeah. like five or ten that went for sale, yeah. flipped it for good money. And that was just because people in other countries were willing to pay stupid money for cars. Um, mm. But it dilutes very fast. Yeah, because it's my as, uh, my attitude is though is if you don't want the Cybertruck, or you don't want it right away, I would probably just put that money into stock, <laughs> and you'd probably be better off than trying to flip it. My attitude. Uh, Dan is asking, do you think Model Y trunk depth is the same as Model Three? Asking for the wife. So, here's my kind of take on that. Model Three trunk depth, I definitely think is going to be less than Model Y. So yes, I think Model Y trunk depth will be maybe a little more. Because the vehicle's taller, so it has a taller rear bumper. But I guess we don't know yet. Yeah. That's and, speculation. Yeah, and and Eric did see last year at the Model Y unveiling, he did see <clears throat> the seven-seat version. Yeah. But we don't know if it's changed since then. But right. if you have those rear seats, the seven seats, that's going to take away from your trunk capacity. But but uh, I don't know. I don't think they're coming out with the seven-seaters right away. No, so it says online seven-seat is 2021. Okay, yeah. So I will double confirm real quick. But it said seven seater interior, yeah, 2021. But in my opinion, it's going to be too tight, so I wouldn't do that. Uh, Crazy Nader says, since we've owned so many Teslas, what's your favorite one and why? Question for both of you. Okay, I'll stay as I always do. I still <laughs> prefer the Model S. Uh, it's just a little, it's a, it's a little quieter, a little smoother, a little nicer. I like <clears> the extra screen behind the steering wheel. The Model 3 is still a greater car, but I do like the S and how it's got a little better range, and it's just, it's a little sexier looking car than than, yeah. I, than the 3. I definitely agree. It's, 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 body lines are top notch. Uh, I'm a fan of the Model 3, preferably the performance, because I love tracking the car. It's a blast, but I think Model Y 
it's going to be a, a game changer. I think I wish they would have come out with the Y before the three. I understand yeah. why they did what they did, but I think they're going to sell so many Ys. As Elon said, they're going to sell more Ys than they do with the three S yeah. and X combined. And it's it's going to be a great car because it's going to have better co cargo capacity, You know, almost the same range as the three, and, it, and it's much cheaper than the X. So it's going to be a great car. Yeah. It's still not cheap, you know, compared to a Toyota, but it's going to allow even more people to get into a Tesla. Yeah. Um, let's see. BM INK 818 says, does anyone know where I can buy a 110 Cybertruck body to uh, put it on my RC truck? I've actually looked and I've never found anything. So if you do, though, let me know. Uh, Jim has a good point, though. Rivian should buy into and join the supercharger network. But I'm guessing corporate pride prevents that. That's exactly it. And since Rivian, didn't they get some backing from Ford? Yeah, so I don't... Definitely not joining Supercharger I Network if Ford's so. in it. No. Um, yeah. Uh, Vin says, how's the Tesla inventory site going? So we have some updates coming soon. Yeah, we... Can't did, really talk about much. Yeah, but basically we took the inventory listings down last year uh, because... When we first <clears throat> created that site, Tesla didn't really have a way to search their inventory. All you could do was search by like battery size, location, and color, and if you wanted all-wheel drive. That was their only filters you could search on. And you know, when you have 1,500 cars, it was hard to find anything. So we created our own website and allowed you yeah. to, to find cars easily with any option code they've ever added. Tesla, after about two and a half years of seeing our site, finally upgraded their site, and they added almost all the same features. They basically copied it. And, and they it's even cool. added, like, email alerts and everything that we had two and a half years earlier. And so we really didn't need it anymore. It's like it, it, there are still other sites out there, too, um, which are available, like EVCPO is one, which everybody's probably heard of. Um, and I know Hank is doing an update to his site uh, to make it even better. But um, we didn't see the need for our site, another inventory yeah. site. We just use Tesla's site now. It, it's, it provides what we need. Yeah. Um... Veronica wants to know, are there any reasons to not get a Tesla? I mean, you know, definitely get to make sure you're, you're, <clears throat> you, you have the money, too. It's still not I think the cheapest that's, I think that's the biggest issue with yeah. Make sure people. you can afford it, you know. Uh, we've yeah. seen stories of some people buying cars way beyond their means, and, and then they can't afford them, and then they're complaining. But if, if you can't afford a $100,000 car... Don't buy a hundred thousand dollar car. Facts. But you know you can get into a Tesla much cheaper with a Model Three, or there's even some older Model S's now, which are like mid thirty thousand. So it's they're not going to be brand new. They're not going to have all the latest features. But you know, if you can afford the, a, a cheaper Tesla, then go for it. Definitely, or, I, I don't have any there's, complaints. There's some used Model Threes. Oh yeah. You like Model Three is a great car. It's got a lot of really really good tech in it. So don't think like you have to splurge for an S or an X. Model hey, 3s are great. Hey, Eric, can you mention, um, some people have been asking about solar. Can you share the uh, the uh, production we had? So yesterday oh, was, yeah, was sure. like a perfect solar day here in Colorado. We had sunlight all day <coughs> long. And we had a record production uh, day yesterday of almost 90 kilowatt hours. And this is in February. We're getting that. So we can't wait to see what we get um, in... Uh, you know, June when the sun's out all day long. Yeah, it's definitely trending upward. Yeah, so this is our week. We did have some snow and, and some, some clouds and stuff earlier in the week, but you can see on Friday it was over, uh, you know, 89, I think, 0.6 uh, kilowatt hours. And, and we actually have it right there. Yeah. So this, that was Friday. And so for those of you who don't know how to read this graph, this is the Tesla app showing our production and also our power walls and you can see in the morning that light blue color shows when we're charging cars and as different ca we have three different cars are shown uh, starting there one starts at two then another one started about four then the first car stopped charging uh, and then a third car started charging there I believe about 515 somewhere around there and you can see the cars charging then later on about before 8 a.m., I can see Eric preheated his Model 3, and that's that little blue spike this there. Little guy right here. Right about the time the sun came up, and you can see the yellow represents solar throughout the day, and uh, per almost a perfect day there for solar. And we our high peak of there was 14 kilowatts, which right is there. which is amazing. And, and so this little peak too is from the solar on the back of the garage. Yeah, that's basically when the sun started hitting our new array back there just right it, it peaked up like that but then there was like some little clouds or something afterwards but then it gradually as the sun went down and went behind the mountains you can see it drop off on the bottom side of that graph the green shows when our solar system is charging our power walls back up and putting the power the solar energy back into our power walls and then 
um, later on, once the power walls are totally charged, that white color shows that we're sending all this power back to the grid. So you can see for a large part of the day yesterday, we were sending power back to the grid. And, and uh, then through the rest of the day, that little green line shows that the power, power walls were powering our house Solar and power walls were powering the house through the rest of the day and into the next morning. And then yeah. it starts over again on, on Saturday. Yeah. Their app is actually really, really nice. It's yeah. There's still a lot of things we'd like to see with I, the app. Yeah, I wish, yeah right now you can get reporting. I can go amount. back to any day. Unfortunately, it's not easy to choose what right. day I want to go to. It would be nice if you could choose a specific day, like a calendar. Imagine that. And jump exactly to that day instead of having to push 365 times to get go back a year and they could do a little better with the reporting but it's nice that we can still get the the reporting of our you know our solar and power wall usage and production yeah um vin says how hard is it to wrap your own car uh to get it good it's hard so i do not wrap my own cars it's a lot somebody said build a 50 by 60 foot steel building I don't think we have the room for that. We kind of do, but it it would it's on the side be of the hard hill. to get. It would, it's on the side of the mountain or hill. There, it'd be hard to get into that though. So. Uh, mm-hmm. What's better, Tesla Cybertruck or Model X? Ooh. It depends on what you're looking for. Depends on what you need. I I say though, the Cybertruck is going to be amazing. Cybertruck's going to be pretty epic. One, the top of the line Cybertruck is going to cost less than a Model X. It's going to be able to seat up to six. Versus up to seven in a in a in a Model X, but they also have the cargo capacity, so and and the higher ground clearance, so it, it might not be as e- as efficient mm-hmm. as a Model X uh, on the watt hours per mile, yeah. but uh, I think more versatility, just like we're going to see with the Model Y being more versatile and more useful than a Model Three, I, I think we're going to see the Cybertruck is going to overall allow you to do about anything. Definitely. Cyber, it's just going to be so epic. I really can't wait for that one. But I really want the Roadster first. Yep. Just saying. Um, let's see. Uh, answered a couple of those questions. Some of these questions kind of like group together. So I'm just going to yeah, skip see, over see some of them. Rain Films is asking if they think the black interior will come first or white. I'm thinking white because white is an additional cost. And Tesla typically releases stuff that costs uh, more. White's for, free. Oh, it's free now. It's always been free. Oh, I thought it used to be like $1,000 when you switched over. Um, I know that they switched that a while back on the 3, but I thought it was still an no, extra No, Model cost. Y is uh, Okay, it's free. for the Y, it's always been that way. So I don't know then. But I know that y, the white is very popular, so I'm hoping... So yeah, that... exterior, white is included. Oh. All these are extra, no, so... No, that's the color. I'm talking about the interior. Oh, is that what he was talking yeah. about? Oh, yeah, I don't know about interior. Go to the interior. It, it, I believe it's still an extra cost there. Yeah, interior is still 1000 So that's why I believe white would come first. But on that note, could it be red cars with white oh, interior are yeah. first? I don't know. Hopefully, to maximize? Hopefully not, because we ordered white car exterior. I don't really want so. a red car, but mm. I would probably do it if I had I to. I mean, they look nice, but it wouldn't match all the other ones. So. Yeah. Um, let's see. Balk 37 says, would you recommend charging while the sun is up for your cars since we have solar? It depends. I mean, sometimes we do that, but normally we are away from the house at work during the day, so we can't charge via solar. But sometimes on the weekend, um, we will do that. And, you know, just in fact, today I did that. And you also want to look at if you have power walls or not, and if you're on a time of use, because depending on when you send the power back to the electric company, you yeah. might make more money to actually charge at night or charge in the morning when there's not solar, and then send the power when you're getting that solar during the day, send it back to the grid. Yep. So, you know, it just depends. We still charge directly from solar sometimes, but it... it you know, more on like the weekend monetarily, or when it's, someone's working from it's home. It's not always the best. Now here, I'll send you a quick picture, Eric, here. Okay. And you can see... Um, well, while you're doing that, Crazynator is wondering how the power walls have been holding up. Any issues to report for someone looking to purchase some? Uh, no, power walls have actually been really, really nice to have. They've saved us several times. We don't even know our power's out. We just look out the windows and the whole neighborhood's black. And and, many and of Dave you, even commented on it. Yeah, and many of you might have seen we did like a 200-hour off-grid test with our power walls back in like October, I believe. And they kept us going between solar and the power walls. We were able to go like eight days yeah. just off of our power walls and solar. So this is a funny screenshot from David because he mm-hmm. was watching YouTube our oh, live yeah, stream yeah. on the so bottom right. Basically, though, so that, ignore that. But that's from also the app. And you can see that we charged a car here um, a couple of times during the day. Yeah, so um, this was one right here. And basically... And then this was when two were charging. Yeah. 
And then, so this was probably Scott's. Scott's, yeah. And then David's and Scott's, and then mine. And then... And so the green there, the reason why that one's green yeah. is because that car was totally being charged with power from the power walls. It yep. automatically came in and took over and charged the car that way. Yeah, and then here's another, someone plugged in this day. Yeah. We actually had, and, and, and maybe solar wasn't enough to cover it because that car was charging at 48 amps. And yep. the solar, the sun wasn't high enough yet, so there was a little bit of grid usage. But then later on in the day... Uh, we charged a car, and you can see that that color underneath the yellow. It uh, shows that that car was totally being charged via solar, and so it wasn't going back to the grid. Totally going, you know, from our solar panels through the inverters, and you know, back into the grid. Or excuse me, back into the car. It's battery. Yeah. Uh, Jim says, "Are you powering your neighbor's house?" In the afternoon, something to mention if you meet them. Te yeah, technically, technically we are. are. So some days, you know, like... Maybe we should send them a bill. Go back, go back to we that, send them a the, bill? the other days, of use, or even here. Basically, whenever you see that, that white below or on the other graph we had for yesterday's like right usage, here. that means we are sending power back to the grid. That's going into our neighbors. Sometimes we're sending back like 16 or more uh, kilowatts of power. And so like this day especially, in yeah, so, that afternoon so there. all that white stuff... We are powering our neighbors' houses, and we could be powering between like one and sixteen houses because we have such a big system, and depending on how much power our neighbors are using. But yes, we are powering our neighborhood with solar energy. Some of our neighbors use a lot of power if they're watching. Sorry, but they have like a <laughs> swimming pool. Yeah, so they're pool pump, but I think they usually run at night. Yeah, but but yeah, definitely we're, we are helping our neighborhood. We're keeping, you know, and some of our other neighbors have actually gotten solar too, uh, which is definitely helping out. Yeah. Um, so somebody's asking how a Model S P100D would do in a quarter mile against Model X P100D. It would win. Model S would definitely win over X. I think I actually have a video of that when we were at Bandemir. I'll have to double check. Or if you want, you can double check. But yeah, I think there is. Uh, Aiden has a funny, funny little comment here. According to a new poll, 91% of people are dissatisfied with their cars. The other 9% are Tesla owners. Oh. Snap. If I had a meme, I would throw it on the screen right now, but I don't have one ready. Sorry. Um, let's see. Uh, someone said, get the sense home electricity monitor is very easy to use and is better than the Tesla. Yeah, I think app. one of our friends has that. What, doesn't Greg have one of those? Yeah, I think, I think and, yeah, and someone else has sense. That's one where he says it, it senses all your uh, appliances. Uh, appliances, and you can, yeah. You can see when the refrigerator is running or the washer or the dryer. And it's definitely more detailed than what Tesla provides. Yeah, but Tesla could add that feature. Yeah. I think they really could. Yeah. Oh, Vin Vincenzo brings up something about the electric boat, and yeah. I don't think Tesla's going to be doing that, but we do know some other companies uh, have some, like, electric uh, been water some, crafts or yeah, water Yeah, there have been some sports. things in the works. Hopefully, we can show you guys soon. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it'd be cool. Uh, Isaiah says, how soon do you think uh, they would receive the Model Y if they order it now? Depends what you order, I guess, what spec. But, yeah. I mean, if you ordered a performance, it, it might be... It might still be a few months. A few months it's to a year, a, maybe. Yeah, a lot sooner than I have a, we're all-wheel drive. I have a feeling a lot of these initial cars, people are going to get performance on. Yep. Just because they can replace eighty, ninety thousand dollar $90,000 SUVs with this. Instead of, like, most people wouldn't replace that kind of car with, like, a Model 3. Let's see. I see snowgoers wondering when they're going to have a four-motor Cybertruck. Ooh. I don't know, because I know it doesn't Rivian. Or Rivian does, because or, they have track mode. Or there's another company that or, has... Sorry, I say track mode, but it's like uh, a tank track mode. So it's like tank mode. Yeah, but I've seen one of the other competitors is going to have, like, four motors. Uh, Tesla might add that eventually. I don't... And, yeah. you know, like... Or I've seen some of them are going to have it right in the wheels. Instead of having a motor between the wheels, you know, it would be right in the wheel so it'd be interesting if tesla ever has that but i don't know if they're going to do that anytime soon yeah uh steve has a good question did you guys touch the paper dash in cybertruck during the launch event questions concerns yeah. so i actually talked to the guy driving about that and i touched it it was yeah. rock solid yeah it, it, it wasn't it, like it wasn't like a. I don't have a piece it didn't of paper feel like paper but it didn't feel like paper it felt solid like and, Almost like an acrylic or something. Yeah. It, it felt rock it solid. And it looked like marble. The pattern it did, of it yeah. looked like marble. I thought it was odd because I don't really think of having marble or rocks in a truck. Or, but it, or, I actually or a car, but almost like it more than the Model 3 the wood, white. Yeah. Or because the white. 
I don't like the Model 3 white because it's very reflective. Yeah. This was dull. Uh, yeah. As in, like, more of a matte finish. So I actually so really it'll, liked it. It'll be interesting to see what they do if they do keep that yeah. uh, or if they change it to something else. But, yeah, we saw it. We yeah. heard a lot of it was to kind of keep weight down, too. So that kind of dash would be a lot lighter, and it's recycled material, and, hey, maybe, I don't know. It'd be cool. Yeah. So Vincenzo has another question about if yep. we use solar to heat our water. We do not currently. We do have hot water heat for the house, which is yeah. very efficient, but it is uh, heated via natural gas. Mm -hmm. we, would mind, we wouldn't We would mind putting in solar hot water heat, but we are almost out of roof space because we own so yeah. many solar panels on there. So All the good roof planes are and, taken. And, yeah, and so solar hot water heat can be really efficient, but you need the roof space for it or you need to put that somewhere. Um, Another alternative is to, you can have electricity power, like electric baseboard heaters. That's not very efficient. That's and, super and we're not already efficient. not producing, you know, we're, we're producing tons of electricity, but we're also using that in our cars and the rest of the house. Yeah. So we wouldn't really have excess electricity to run baseboard heaters. But there's other ways people, uh, we, we need to get some research done on that, but there's like heat pumps that we could have put in that might be able to help out a um, uh, little more efficiency on heating. but. For now, uh, we do not use solar to heat our water. Yeah. Chadwick has a good question. Uh, what do we think about Tesla stopping supercharging on salvage and rebuilt cars? Well, this has been a hot topic of debate lately, if you follow a lot of online news. Um, I am pro them doing this. I think they should have to go through like the recertification process because I don't want Joe Blow rebuilding a car, plugging in next to me at a supercharger, and blowing... Like, up, basically. Yeah, I think... One, I don't want to be on fire. I think one problem is, is right now, I think they totally shut it off, and that's it. it yeah. Would, it would be nice if they did have a way to recertify their car, process, yeah. and that once they tested everything and saw that the charging system was, was working up to spec, and the battery's fine, then I think they should, you know, consider allowing it back on the supercharger network. But if you just have a guy that, you know, buys a total Tesla and gets it towed, or, you know, fixes it up enough to drive it over to supercharger, I don't know... It could, if I would would trust that, unless it's certified, I would like it to be certified as a user. Yeah, um, and also it would be terrible for them to sell that car to somebody who doesn't know it was rebuilt and have issues with it. Yeah, so and I have seen some stories of people selling rebuilt Teslas pretty cheap, Very and then cheap. the first time somebody tries taking out a road trip, they find that they can't charge and uh, supercharge, and that leads to problems because then you have to find another outlet and charge a lot slower. Yeah. Um, let's see. Everything Tesla Pro said, should I buy an older Tesla for like $25,000, like a 2013? Um, if he budgets like 25,000, I would recommend probably waiting and saving up a bit more until you can get a used model three because a 2013 is not going to have any autopilot or anything. It's, it's pretty basic of a car. Don't get me wrong. They were great, but it's not gonna have any autopilot. And that's a big thing for Tesla. That's one of the big reasons I would buy one. Yeah. So Vincenzo has another solar question. Yep. And he's talking about our time. We, so we have time of use for electricity uh, where we are in Colorado with Excel Energy. Basically, during the day from like 9 a.m. until 2 p.m., we are at like uh, shoulder rate where it's charging about, I don't know the exact number, maybe 13, 14 cents per kilowatt yep. hour. And then from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., it charges more, maybe 19 to 20 cents an hour. And at 6 p.m., it goes to 9, it goes back down to that uh, part peak rate. And then from 9 p.m. until 9 a.m., it's at the cheapest rate, which is like 8 cents an hour. So typically, uh, we are producing solar during the day, and we're getting those part peak and peak rates. And so we're getting credits on our yeah. electric bill at the high points when everybody else is using the most power. And then at night, we are living off of our power walls and then charging the cars. Sometimes we do use some grid power, but sometimes you'll see from the graphs that Eric showed earlier, we are still charging our cars via... Uh, the power walls and uh, like here. Uh, the other one. Well, that's not that's showing the oh, grid the power one, at sorry. night. The other one shows where we were. So this one there with that green one shows that the that car was totally being charged yeah, right via here. our power walls. And so we do use some grid power at night when it's cheapest. Uh, the cool thing with the power walls is that virtually all of the power we use is at that lowest rate. Yep. Even if we use it throughout the day, that's our solar or power walls providing the power during the day, and only power we take from the grid is, is the cheap stuff at night. Yeah. 
Uh, Mark has a good question. Once your Roadster arrives, will you still keep the Performance Model 3? Well, my Roadster, I plan on fully specking it out and getting SpaceX package if it's available. Nobody really knows for sure yet, unless yeah. you're Elon. Uh, hopefully it is, though, because my Roadster is probably going to be my new track car. So... I don't know. Probably gonna have probably to gonna room. have to make some cuts in the garage, and yeah. we have to see who makes it and who doesn't. Yep. Um, I see. Well, Coles has a good question. Yeah. Are we ever first? gonna get another Model X? Uh, mm, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think we have. So we actually were talking about this the other day. We, we keep in, changing cars. I just like yeah. But we talked about this a little bit the other day, and if we would have gotten a Raven yep. Model X, we probably would still have it today. Yeah, it's just like we got we got one of the very first uh, Model Xs that had autopilot uh, autopilot three the uh, FSD computer. Unfortunately, it came out about a week before the Raven did with the increased range and the improved suspension. So yeah. if we if we had gotten a Raven, we probably would still have it. But with the Y coming out uh, and and that's not having a family with seven you know people, I don't really see the need for us needing an X. And with the Cybertruck coming too, I think that's going to be big enough for us. But I was going to say I see Nicoflex is from France. Salut, comment ça va? So <laughs> yeah. I don't know what any of that is. So They're just welcoming um, some of our French viewers. FYI, yeah, thank you for coming and tuning in. FYI, please don't spam the chat because I will have to put you in timeout and I don't want to have to do it. But people are spamming the chat, so please don't. Anywho, back on with the fun. Crazinator, what's the most impressive thing you have seen with Cybertruck? I almost, like the body panels. Yeah. Thing that you can't, because I see hammer. so mm. many dents in cars. It's yeah. not even funny. Door dings. Yeah. Exactly. You don't have to worry about any of that. So that's highly. That's, that's, that's cool. So, I mean, we saw Franz take a sledgehammer. Some people say it wasn't a true sledgehammer. It was some other sort of hammer. Who knows what kind of hammer it was. But he took it and he swung it at full force into the car door and yeah. there was not a dent visible. There's nothing there. Yeah. And so um, that Windows was cool. didn't work out so well. Yeah. That, you know, they're still working on those, but it's also possible they didn't have the right <laughs> ones installed. Who knows? But yeah. I thought that was really cool, the door panels. But I thought it was also cool with that air suspension, how they were able to tilt it up and down and, and it will make loading into the bed of the truck a lot easier. Yeah, there's so many awesome things with should, Cybertruck. And it should make off-roading easier. Definitely. Yeah, and, and yeah, it, it was... The range? The, the range price? Was, should be a range. Yeah, the price the, is amazing, too. I could not believe... It was at least 10000 cheaper than what I thought oh, I was it was going to be. Oh, I was thinking 20000 cheaper. Yeah, so the I price is I was thinking it was going to be way up there. Yeah. Um, Jack is about to have Tesla solar run by... Or run his entire container home. That's oh, cool. awesome. A yeah, full definitely. solar house. You'll like it. it. I, you'll get addicted if you look in the app. You'll yeah, be able you to see your solar and track it throughout the day. I, you'll really enjoy uh, seeing how much energy you're producing and how much money you're going to be saving over the next 30-something years. Mm -hmm. uh, Nasty Naz says, do you plan on purchasing the CyberQuad? Yes. Uh, is that what the name is? I haven't heard the name yet. Well, the CyberQuad sounds nice. Yeah. I like the it sound. It's got a good ring to it. I like it. We know what he's talking about. Yeah. yeah. Thadia said heat pumps will put you 100% over heating efficiency. Yeah, so, yeah, we need to we need to look into that. We should get an estimate done. Yeah, we need to, to do that. To replace, because currently we have a boiler, natural gas boiler, and and uh, we should definitely have that looked into. Yeah. Only thing is, is with the location of that, I don't know how, it, and the venting, you know, the exhaust that we have. I don't know. I think the heat pumps too require it's worth a, quote. a unit outside, so I yeah. don't know how where they would put that. So we're yeah. definitely going to look into that, though. Yeah. Um, Isaiah says, "How did the interior of the Cybertruck feel, quality wise?" I thought it felt great. Yeah, it's like I don't remember. It, it was felt dark. like the same materials as like the Model Three U's and the new S and X, yeah. which is not leather, but it's a very Comfy, synthetic, doesn't stretch out yeah. like leather or anything. And there so. was plenty of room. Eric was in the front. I was yeah. in the back, but there was plenty of leg room and plenty of headroom. Um, uh, Pete, who was with us, is a lot taller. Or was it, I think, no, it was Alex was next to me. He's a Alex lot taller. Alex was super tall, and too. And plenty of headroom in there. So there's a, there's a lot of room back there. And, you know, if you have six people, it might be a little weird having that sixth person mm. in the middle seat in front of the screen. But yeah. definitely plenty of room if you only have five people. Oh, yeah. A lot of people are saying, hi, that, sorry, they're late. To chat anyway, welcome. Uh, if you haven't yet, smash that like button if you're enjoying the uh, live stream today. Wow. Um, let's see. Yep, there are a bunch of messages here. Sorry, I got to scroll through all those. Wow. Um, what do you guys think about Tesla disabling autopilot for a person who bought it from a third party? Um, so they actually remedied that situation, but it was bought from a third party who bought it 
at an auction that Tesla put it at. So that was kind of a sticky situation. I'm not going to lie. That's a little bit trickier. Normally, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But if you are, just call Tesla before you buy that car and just ensure that it'll transfer and what it truly has. So I saw uh, down below, Isaiah is asking how much we think the model Cybertrucks cost. Well, if we're talking about the diecast one, they're not out yet, but I'm guessing it's going to cost $250, just like all of the other Tesla Cyber uh, Tesla diecast vehicles. And as we were talking about earlier, the new Mattel limited edition one, which is sold out, was $400. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd guess around $250, because that's what all the others are going to be. Uh, someone asked, what do you think the cyber quad's going to cost? Ooh, I don't even know. I don't know what normal quads cost. Ten grand? I, Is that I, too much? I don't know. Couple grand? I honestly don't know. That's a good question. Um, where are the mods at? Sorry, where are the mods? So <laughs> uh, it, maybe we'll eventually hire some other mods because we could probably use that. Um... Mark said, people who rebuild totaled cars, not just Teslas, are trying to cheat the system and basically everybody else, they deserve no sympathy. Yeah, so I see well uh, uh, Vincenzo is asking again about electric stovetops. We actually have an induction yeah. stove, uh, which we love. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, you have to have gas for the control or you have to yeah. have the... We love our induction stovetop because it's it's the, the flex... You know, it's the the convenience and safety of electricity, but also the flexibility and, and precision of gas. But... We love our induction. The one, a little bit of trivia, why we bought induction is a few years ago, <laughs> yeah. we used to have the gas range and the controls were all along the front of that. And one day I came home and one of our dogs, Brecken, he likes to counter surf and he had stood up and he turned on the, the gas just slightly. So it was trying to do the, the it igniter. To light up. So it was like, tch, 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 tch. and luckily it wasn't releasing gas, but it was doing that. I came home, I don't know how long it had been like that, but the kitchen was really hot and and I could have just seen that we could have lost the house and yeah. everything. And so we were like immediately removed the knobs, got rid of that gas range, switch it out with induction. And we have not looked back. It's great because it's just so precise. And, and it boils water in like two minutes. Less than two minutes we can boil water. It's amazingly yeah. fast, amazing power. Or even, that's, you know, for a small amount. But it, it's amazingly fast for boiling water. Whereas with our gas range, you could let it sit there. And it, it would take 10 minutes or more to, to get that water boiling. Yeah. Uh, Cars, watches, and matcha? Uh, it says, question, does high heat affect Tesla vehicles like 120 plus on a daily basis? Well, batteries actually do a, a little bit better at high heat. 120 is, is super hot, though. Uh, so the cool pump is probably going to run the uh, compressor. But I don't think you'd have any issue because a lot of people live in, like, Arizona and everything. Some of my friends even live there. And they've had zero problem, and it's super hot there. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, somebody's saying quads are normally like 10K plus. So I guess, yeah, it'd probably be pretty expensive. Um, yeah, the bot was back and I officially booted them. So shouldn't have to deal with that. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's pretty much it. Do you have any other news? I think that's about it today. It's a good, you know, it wasn't the busiest week, but there was a lot of Tesla updates, but yeah. Yeah. It was good. Oh, actually, Vince has another good question. Killing it with the questions today, Vince. Yeah. Killing it. Um, do you think Tesla will have a 60 hertz or 120 hertz display? Probably just 60. I don't think they really need 120. That's a good question, yeah, because you're not going to be doing any gaming yeah. or anything like that. But but uh, if you're if you're really hardcore into gaming, you're not doing 120 hertz either. you got to be 240 you're rocking, or something. You're like rocking that, that 240. That's why actually this screen right here I is. would guess 60, Just but we'll see. Yeah, I would think 60 would be fine for a car. That's a really good question. We uh, can see what we can do to figure that out. Um, but yeah, I guess that's uh, kind of it. We'll probably just call it there. Pretty slow week. Hopefully, uh, we see some fun stuff this week. Maybe we'll get some Y news. That would be nice. Cross our fingers. We're going to be getting that news soon. Yeah, as soon as we get, like, Y news, maybe we'll just do, like, an impromptu live stream because that'll be hitting pretty hard, and everybody is wanting their Y. Clearly. It's a, it's 
going to be a huge car. Um, but anyway, huge thanks to tune in today from all of you guys. It's been a lot of fun. A thanks, lot of really good questions. Thanks for all the questions. Yeah, and yeah. if you have any video ideas, definitely mention them in chat or send us an email or something. Let us know what you'd like to see more of on the channel. Yeah, a lot of you have actually sent in some really fun stuff that we have going on. Um, so we should be doing a lot of really cool things. Uh, as always, though, huge thanks to our channel sponsor. If you are unfamiliar with Abstract Ocean, definitely check it out. First link in the description. They do all kinds of cool accessories for Model SX and 3. And if you have a 3, you know how fingerprint prone that center console is. So definitely like wrap it, matte screen protector, a lot of really cool stuff. Definitely check them out and using code Tesla inventory will get you 10% off your first order. Um, as always though, huge thanks to you guys. Again, so much fun doing these live streams. We have a great time with all you guys. But smash that thumbs up button and we will see you guys next time. Bye.